Hey everybody, it's your girl Linda with the life of a fisherman's wife. I decided to come in my little decorated uh, hall area for you today uh, so we can have a little discussion about my son who is 28 years old today. Uh, I want to encourage some people. Um, I want to uh, give a little advice to, for some people. Uh, just a little bit of everything today. So that's why I decided to jump on today. But any old who, let me move my tissue because they look tacky sitting there, huh? Let me move my tissue, put it in the bag. But any old who, uh, so what my uh, vlog is about today is uh, my 17 year old son. But, but before I get into all of that, there's no tea time. Before I get into all of that, I just want to uh, give a shout out to everybody who has been watching my channel. And I hope that I have been bringing something to you that is informative, that useful, most of all useful. Uh, I wanna encourage you that there are still things that you can do uh, and keep you safe during COVID time. Uh, because we can get a little store crazy staying in the house and not going places. That is the reason for these videos so that you can see uh, places you didn't know. I didn't know anything about the wolves. Uh, I ran across it. I thought it was very interesting and wanted to do it. So that's why I did that. Uh, every little vacation that I take, every little getaway that I do, it is to uh, learn different things. And when I present it to you, it's not that I don't want you to go. Uh, you look at my videos and you don't want to go. It, I wanted to make you want to go. I wanted to make you want to do these things because my experience is not your experience. Uh, your experience would be breathtaking. I am sure these places that I show you, like Christmas Lane, uh, it, it, I looked at the video and I was like, yeah, that was a lot prettier in person than it is on this video. So that's why I do these things to, most of all, to inform you of these places and second, to make you want to travel to these places. Okay, now we're going to get into my my son that's 28, James Styles. Happy birthday today to you. So this is what happened. Uh, he's, he's 28, well, he was 16 at the time. And he decided that he and his friend was going to go get them a little tattoo. 16, a tattoo. So... Parents always make friends with your uh, with your kids' teachers. Make friends with your with with your friends with your with your uh, uh, kids' teachers because they tell they tell stuff. So his teacher and Alyssa told me I can use her name, Alyssa Stigman. She was working at Ruther High School here in Kenosha. And uh, she called me up on the telephone and she was like, hey, Linda, did you know James had a tattoo? And I was like, what? A tattoo? Are you talking about a Hannah? I think that's what you call it, the ones that you can wash off. You, you know, you put them on it and they come off. She was like, nah, this is a, red, a real tattoo. It's red and everything. And I was like, don't tell me he got some little girl's name on his arm or body parts and she was like no nah, he got his own name I said oh he got his own name like he gonna forget his name so he was at home and he was in his bedroom and I went in his bedroom and I said James is there something you need to tell me and he was like no and then I saw you sure it's something you don't need to tell me he said no and I said are you positive I said because you know these mama instincts kicking in and I think there's something you need to get off your chest I think it's something you need to tell me and he was like, no. And then so I was like, oh, I can't get him that way. How am I going to get him? How am I going to get him to tell me he got this tattoo without telling him my source where I got the tattoo from? Because you never want to give up your source. You want to always keep your source so that you can use them another day. So I said, it's pretty warm in here. Why don't you take off your long sleeve hoodie shirt in the summer? And he said, oh, I'm comfortable. And then I said, I think you need to take it off. And so finally I convinced him to take off the, the, the sweatshirt, but he hid it. He wouldn't show it to me. And then so I was like, okay. And then finally um, I looked over and I, I said, is that a tattoo? Is that a tattoo on your arm of your name? You got a tattoo of your name on your arm. Where did you get it from? 
what did you get? And he would not tell me. Because, you know, I was ready to press charges. He's underage and somebody's tattooing him. In my mind, as a parent, as a mom, as someone who loves you, I'm thinking that you done went to somebody dark, dingy, dirty basement and you been got you got stuck with some dirty needles that was stuck, somebody else got stuck with. They got all kind of diseases and stuff. You know, this is what I'm telling him. So I say, uh, you know what? I'm making you a doctor's appointment. We're going to the doctor. You're going to get tested for every disease that can be transmitted through body fluids. You're going to get tested. So I called up his doctor and I told him everything that was going on. His doctor was a, a, a very nice. It was a he. It was Dr. Freelander. And here in Kenosha, he worked at Kenosha uh, Hospital. I think he got his own practice right now. And so uh, he was a pediatrician. So that's why James didn't keep going to him because he was a pediatrician. Once they turned 18, they out of there. But anyway, so I um, went to him and I, and I, I, well, I called on the phone to make the appointment. I told the receptionist why I was making an appointment, what I wanted it for. So when I got to the office, when we, you know, when our appointment came, when I got to the office, he said, well, you know, this blood test really isn't going to do any good. I can test him now, but then I have to text him six months down the line to make sure that there is nothing here. And then I said, okay, you know, that's fine. I, I just want him stuck. Just stick him. How many times do you have to stick him? 10 would be good for me. Maybe 15. I don't know. 20 may be enough. I don't know how many times I really want you to stick him with that needle. I really want you to punish him for getting his tattoo. And then he said, oh, we'll just have to stick him once to get a couple of vials of blood and we'll be good. So then the doctor called me and he said, hey, everything came up clear. He has nothing now. But, you know, in six months down the line, I want you to get him tested again. I said, okay, that's fine. So... I'm thinking in my mind, that is not enough. That is not enough. I need something else. I need something to really teach him a lesson. I wanted him to know. So um, I I was at work and I came home and I was out in front of the house. So I, I blew the horn so he so he can come out the house. So he came out the house. When he came out the house, I was leaning on the stern wheel like this right here. I was... I could be a good actress when I want to. So I'm, I'm pretending like I'm crying. And then he goes, Mom, what's wrong with you? And I was like, I can't tell him. <laughs> and, and, and I mean, I am acting like I am having a mental breakdown. I'm crying so hard. And he goes, Mom, Mom, tell me, tell me, go ahead and tell me. I know my son loved me. And I know he didn't want to see me cry like that. And then I was like, I made up something. He's not a reader. I could have pulled this off on my Eddie. My Eddie would have said, Mom, <laughs> that's not the way that worked. But I was like, the doctor said, you got hepatitis B. And then so he was like, well, what do that mean? I said, my son has always wanted kids. Always wanted kids ever since he was, I don't know what age. So since he wanted kids, he got Junior. He got Janelle. He has Rolandon. He has Paisley Lynn. And he has Faith. Yeah. And I told them Grace was coming, but Grace, Grace not coming. Grace not coming right now. Okay. So anyway, let me get back to the point what I was what I was talking about. But anyway, so I said they said you, you can't have any any kids. Oh, but let me tell you this. He he was also blessed with two additional kids, and that's Charlie and that's Mila. Yes, he was he was blessed with those two. God decided that he wanted to bless him with those two also, who are very lovely and sweethearts. Okay, let me get back to the story right real quick because this video I don't want to be too long. I want you to watch it to the end. Uh, so he I said he said you can have him in kids hey you could kill everybody in the house because you, you can't eat out the same utensils that we eat out of you got to you have to eat out your own separate utensils and and I just gave him this long story everything that he had to do I had already got him at the point that he couldn't have kids that was a wrap for him he was done I didn't even had to go to the rest of us though the rest of the stuff was just an add-on. I didn't have to go through anything else, but you can't have kids. Because ever since this child was like old enough to know anything about kids, he wanted kids. 
That was his thing. So he started reaching for the door handle and I'm like, what you finna do? He said, I'm going down to Lake Michigan. Now he's crying. I'm going down to Lake Michigan and I'm gonna walk in Lake Michigan and you'll never have to worry about me again. And I said, what? He said, I'm killing myself. And then I started laughing and I said, and then I got serious and I said, James, I said, I was just joking. The doctor called me and told me everything was clear about your blood test. I say, I just wanted you to know the seriousness of what you did. Cause I don't think you got it. I don't think you knew. You thought you were just getting a tattoo, but honey, you could have got something. You could have got HIV. You could have got hepatitis B, but it is not that devastating. It, it can be cured uh, or you can get over it. Uh, you could have gotten a whole lot, a whole slew of things that you could have gotten. I say, but I say, by God's grace, you didn't. I say, so could you please stay out of people's basements? getting tattoos. I don't know where he got this tattoo from. I heard he got it out of a back of a van. I heard he got it out of, so he was sitting in somebody's kitchen. I don't know. And this child didn't even pay for the tattoo. Some, one of his other friends paid for the tattoo. All right. That story was told to say, kids, when, when your parents tell you don't do something, it is not to be mean or to take things away from you. It is to keep you safe. It is to keep you healthy. That's it. That's all. That's all we want for you. We want for you all to grow up, be productive adults, and live your life. That's all we want. That's all we want. And always remember to have a teacher on your side. Always remember to make that connection with a teacher so that when something happened at school, you know, you're, the teacher is not afraid to come to you and talk to you about it. I'm talking to the parents now, you know, make sure that, you you know, you can talk to somebody at that school, build a relationship with somebody at that school. But, you know, I don't want to embarrass my son too much because I got so many good stories about him. It take a village to raise these kids these days. I have a story about him though I have you rolling. Uh, but for the sake of this video, I won't make it. I won't tell you that story. Maybe another time, maybe when he and I are together so that he can kind of like nudge me and say, mama, you're going too far. Cause you know, mama's go too far. Uh, but anywho, I love my son. I do. I love him. And, 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 uh, if you didn't see my Shein, John Shein, Shein, um, S-H-E-I-N haul, please go back and find that video and look at that dress. There's it's a flame and a hot dress that I thought that I was really rocking. Uh, but yeah, I was talking to both my sons. I told, I say, my oldest son, I would say, yeah, if you, if I had to walk out the house with that, you probably would have pushed me back in there and told me, mom, you got to change clothes. My youngest said, said, my youngest son said, mom, you know me. You rock you. You do whatever you want to wear. Because if you wear two pieces of cloth, I wear one. And then I said, baby, that's all you need. I need the two. You need one. So that's 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 the way how different my kids are. You know, one of them is a very free-spirited type guy. And the other one, my oldest is not. My old, oldest is me. And does he look like me? I think my youngest my oldest son looked at like me at different parts of my life and my youngest son and start to look at like me and my older part of my life that's why i think you know um but my young my oldest son different parts of my life my oldest son start to look like me uh but we're going to end this video at that point right there and i'm going to say make sure you make your tomorrow better than your today. And while you're doing that, please look down, hit that notification bell, subscribe and share. Share these videos so they can get out to people who actually need the encouragement because there are people who need encouragement on this time because this is the holiday season. And I understand and I know that it seems like death is all around us, but it's death all the way around, you know, all year round. But during the Christmas season, it seems like it's a lot worse. 
my mom passed away during Thanksgiving holidays, not this year, but during the Thanksgiving holidays, my mom passed away. My husband, mom passed away right during the Thanksgiving holidays. And then I just had a nephew to pass away last year during the Thanksgiving holidays. And do you know what? I don't remember when most people pass away, but those are the ones that stick out in my mind the most because it was around the holiday. Uh, so I know there, there are a lot of you who are down. A lot of you are not looking forward to the holidays, but I want you, I want to encourage you today that you can make it, that, you know, that, that person was a big part of your life and that that person wants you to carry on. That person wants you to love on. That person wants you to uh, remember them, of course, remember them, never forget them, always remember the person that you lost. But they don't want you to stay in bed that, on Christmas Day or be down any day. They want you to remember them and they want you to feel the warmth that's in there, in, in, you know, from their memories that hit that heart. You know, you say, I remember them and I love them so dearly. Like I love my nephew and my mom and my husband's mom. I love them so dearly. But I remember uh, my mom used to call me all the time for different, my birthdays and Christmas uh, and any other holiday. She used to call me. She got to the point where she couldn't talk because she had cancer in the throat and we would communicate by her just pressing button i would ask her yes or no questions and she would answer me yes or no so for the people or uh, the loved ones that you have loved ones to still here and you are angry with them please make amends please make amends please whatever it is it wasn't that bad it really wasn't Forgiveness is always there. You can always forgive your loved ones because there's going to be a day and a time that they're going to close their eyes and you can't not tell them that I forgive you and I love you and let's make this thing work. So forgive your loved ones. Forgive your sisters, your brothers, your auntie, your whoever did you, whoever you felt done you wrong. Forgive them. Okay, that's it. Because, you know, this girl can talk. This girl can go. This girl can really go. But I'm, I'm not going to go-go. I'm, I'm going to let you go, go. That's what I'm going to do. I'm going to let you go, go. And um, I'll see you tomorrow. Bye for now, my family. <laughs>